Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Doug Baldwin Seahawks going up against Alan Hearns' Jaguars. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth as we turn it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, the fans in teal and black are ready to lock down the bank as you get a look inside Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Blake Bortles trots onto the field with the rest of the Jags offense. A win last week for them over Indianapolis. And Blake Bortles, one of the best games he's had this year, over 300 yards. Second time over 300 this year, and, and I think the other game over 300 was also against the Colts. Yeah, it's only the second time that Jacksonville swept the Colts in a season series since joining the AFC South in 2002. The AFC South has kind of been a get right against the Colts, hasn't yeah. it? Tennessee swept them yep. for the first time in what feels like four or five presidential administrations. <laughs> and now this happens here with Jacksonville. But ordinarily, if Blake Bortles is over 300 yards passing, that's usually not good news for Jacksonville. In this case, it was the cherry on top of a big win. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Second and very short here, less than a yard. Now Bortles. And this is caught. Mercedes Lewis with a grab. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A good pick up there of 20 yards. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opens things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. And he's got it. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking and finding Allen Hearns. And he is down deep into Seattle territory. That goes for a gain of 31. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Into the red zone, it's Bortles. That's complete right around the eight. And a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And now look at him go. He's at the 40, the 20, 10, 5. And he's going to score. It's a Seahawks. Touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the score. And a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game.
Blair Walsh on to attempt the extra point. And this will give the Seahawks a 7 to nothing lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And they'll be looking to start fresh. Just a moment ago they were backed up, coughed up the football, and then saw it go the other way for six points. I just wonder, partner, sometimes they put such an emphasis on things. And you know in that situation, as they ran out there, they were told, take care of the football, don't cough it up. And sometimes that's the last thing you hear, and that's exactly what you do. They go play action here on first down. Completes it left side to the tight end, Lewis. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. That one goes for 24 yards. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. throwing on second down and this time he's got the hookup it's complete and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49 in today's football where receivers break tackles make people miss <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot that's a big time play by the defense And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Again, they'll throw with Bortles. And the third down pass falls incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in.
Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Russell Wilson in the offense for the Seahawks trotting out onto the field, coming off a win over Philadelphia. Snapped the Eagles' nine-game win streak and improved themselves to 8-4 and four on the season. And how about his numbers? 20 of 31, 227 yards, three touchdowns. That sounds fine. But it's just the idea that everything runs through Russell Wilson on offense now for Seattle. Remember when their identity was to run the football first? Oh, no. It's just getting the ball in the hands of number three now and letting him create. 15 touchdown pass in the fourth quarter alone this season. That ties Eli Manning's 2011 mark for most in one year. The first carry now. This is Lacey. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So it'll be first down here after the run. From the gun, it's Wilson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there. And that'll bring up second down. And this offense often hinges on one of the best tight ends in the league, and that's Jimmy Graham. I think he made up for lost time when he got to the NFL because in college, he was mainly a basketball player, a defender who couldn't score. Now he's flipped it around in the NFL. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to score. Second down, Lacey. Not a whole lot of room to run. Gets it to the 35 after showcasing the great move. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Jacksonville's defense, this crew held Indianapolis to 10 points last week. And free agent pickup Clayus Campbell, he set the franchise record for sacks, did he not? He certainly did. Move past the previous franchise record holder, Tony Brackens, who had 12 back in 1999. Not too long after the Jaguars began their existence. But think about that, what you just said. Free agent pickup. Ordinarily in this league, we're jumping on general managers and ownership about their free agent pickups and how they don't pan out. This Calais Campbell's deal, fantastic move by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Wilson. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Calais Campbell in there to drop it for a four-yard loss, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sad. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, OK, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. And tough starting field position here. Rookie first rounder from LSU. It's Leonard Fournette. And that gets him a little room as he'll take this up over the 10-yard line. 
Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. There we go now. Blue 45. On second down, here's Fournette. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 11 yards there for Jacksonville, and a first down as well. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Portals on the give to Fournette. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Here we go with the starters for Seattle last week, holding the Philadelphia Eagles, and Carson Wentz is just 10 points. And when you think about Seattle in 2017, you think about the injuries that they've suffered on defense. Cliff Averill, one of their great pass rushers, out for the season. Well, Frank Clark has replaced him, and he provides big-time pass rusher Michael Bennett. And how about the Legion of Boom in the secondary? Richard Sherman hurt, mm. Cam Chancellor hurt, both out for the season. But the best eraser in the NFL, in my opinion, Earl Thomas at safety, is still there, and they played big-time defense against Philadelphia on Sunday night. And they also got Byron Maxwell back. He had 10 tackles and an interception. This is Ivory. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. But now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Here we go now. From the gun, it's Bortles. Open man is Westbrook complete. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. And now a first down following that long game. To throw his Bortles. Going for the deep ball. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. He is firing that pigskin around the yard. Yeah, put it deep downfield, taking shots. Unsuccessful there, but I like his moxie. Bortles will try again on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Bortles. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. 
It'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? Here's Brad Nordman now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now Wilson on first down. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That's gonna go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play call, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy's disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. Wilson on the draw, he'll give to Lacey. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. He'll wind up getting 11 on that one. And that is gonna set up a third and one. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it. And boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup. And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. On third and one, Wilson. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one maybe not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. Play fake, Bortles. And unable to 
connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. That'll bring up second down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Bortles going to run the draw with Fournette. Fournette fighting through. And he's brought down, but not before a really nice stiff arm to create a little space. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. That was a good, strong run there. While it won't pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. The offense on third down tonight, just one for three thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. Hey, hey, hey. Ready. 390. 390. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. He spins free, and he's got the first down yardage as he brings this up to the 47. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far working pretty well from them and here's the best part we always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on I think he likes natural light best so the offense has it first and ten Here's a give to Fournette. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through. And that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now they'll throw it. Bortles. His throw incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. Third down here. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds, so a big call there. That brings up fourth. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? They begin the drive with Lacey. 
And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. That's where you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Second down, Wilson. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. They go play action now. Wilson. And down he'll go at the 25. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that's going to make it fourth down. John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Jaguars go on offense first down and 10. And now out come the Jags. Now, if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple of yards out of it because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Second down, here's Bortles. That's into the hands of Westbrook over the middle. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and that just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Brad Nordman now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Eddie Lacy coming back onto the field now. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. 
They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series so those surface tablets come into play. <laughs> Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. They start the drive on the ground with Lacey. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. Because I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. They're going to bring pressure. They run it again with Lacey. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. Pretty good running there. Nine yards. Sets up a third and one. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. The Seahawks on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They'll try and run for it. Here's Lacey. And he will have the first down here as he's up to the 15. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Off the fake to Lacey, here's Wilson. Room here to run. <laughs> And he's brought down after a good gain. 23 yards on the play. First down, Wilson. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll make it a second down. Time. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. From the gun on third down, Wilson. Open man, it's Vanette. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. They brought in the heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down.
And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. This time it's Lacey. And he'll go down at the 28. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive they went three and out. Stay on the ground on first down with Lacey. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. Down right around the 25. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. And the Seahawks on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. From the shotgun, Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right. They're kind of played into their hands. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll's going to call out his field goal unit. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. So they get three. They were hoping for six. An unlucky number 13 play drive. Well, you go to the sideline after putting three points on the board. Happy, but you wanted to be ecstatic. You wanted to have six on the board. On the opposite sideline, though, the defense, I think they're high-fiving each other, only giving up three after letting them run that much offense. After the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. To return it is Corey Grant. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They begin with a run by Fournette. And I don't think he got there. No, they stop him right where it all started. No gain on the play there. Second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Two minutes to play here in the first half. Back with more from Jacksonville. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this.
When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports halftime report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's be you good. tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. Ten yards still left on second down. Shotgun now for Bortles. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. Ready, green, 39, green, 39. Bortles going to throw. Completes it to Lee. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Brad Nordman now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Great starting field position here for the offense. Now a first down carry. It's Lacey. Slips past him. Where'd he go? And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And a good little broken tackle run there for the former second-round pick, Eddie Lacy. He's a big back, and he runs with some power and definitely with some physicality. And enough of those types of runs as they accumulate, they turn into bigger runs later because after a while, guys don't want to deal with him. and 10. It's Wilson. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. First down with Wilson. And some space here. 
And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. On first down. It's caught. Lock it. A good pick up there. 26 yards. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. And this is no good. Close but no cigar, just wide right. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. Here we go now. Green, 90. Green, 90. On first down, Bortles. They'll get this over to Westbrook. It's complete. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. Now the offense lining up first and ten. secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. This is a quick incompletion. This is likely the last play here of this first half. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. A final shot before half for Bortles. He's going to loft one deep left side here. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. 
Let's take a look back at the first half. The Jaguars are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Seahawks will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now first and 10, coverage breaks down here, and he ends up at the 14-yard line before he stopped on the play. Same drive. The pass and catch would lead to a fumble. Seahawks recover the ball and return it for a touchdown. They strike first in the half. Now to the middle of the first. Campbell going to get to the QB for the sack. This goes for a loss of four. So that's it for us at the EA Sports Studio. We'll go back now to Everbank Field for the start of the second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spend the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half nice first half that we've had guys but be prepared for some change-ups we're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half see how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively <laughs> to throw is Wilson on first and ten he couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, Charles, let's shift gears. I've got to ask you about what's going on in the AFC West. Do you? I, I have, you really? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, no, Kansas, City, Kansas City's lost four straight. Denver's right. lost eight straight. What, what's going on? We'd all love to know, wouldn't we? Because I don't know how you felt about it, because I won't put words in your mouth, but I feel like the consensus around the country was this is the best division in the yeah. NFL. Three teams potentially could go to the playoffs. Yet, as you noted, Kansas City's an absolute free fall. Oakland's on a nice little run right now. They've gotten themselves back into it. They're tied with Kansas City. And the Chargers are also tied with them at the top all at 6-6. Six and six, And many think they're the hottest ticket. Forget tiebreakers right now. This division will work itself out. Oakland and Kansas City play next week. L.A. Kansas City play on Saturday, December the 16th. And Kansas City plays at Denver. And Oakland plays at L.A. 12:31 New Year's Eve. Play fake here on first down. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. to Lacey. Now this is Wilson. Out to the right here to Wilson. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. 
For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses. Catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. And the offense inside the five here at the four. It's first and goal. They come out here in the eye. Now it's Wilson. And he floated one out there incomplete. Down this close to the goal line. First down. Surprised that wasn't a run. I am. And you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation. Because second down, that gives me an option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Second down following the incompletion. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. Second and goal here from the nine. They'll run it with Lacey. And he's going to pull his way down to about the one-yard line. A very valuable nine-yard pickup, and now they're set up a little better here for third and goal. So now things get interesting on third and goal from the one. This almost becomes a Darwinian call, doesn't it? Almost survival of the fittest here. I know we can go all cliche. I'll go ahead and do it. Who wants it more here? Who has a better leverage at the line of scrimmage? Let's go and see what happens. On third and goal, Wilson. And that is incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll is going to call out his field goal unit from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they take it all the way to the one yard line, but in the end, they opt for three. I know if this was a video game, they never would have gone for the field goal because Brandon, who kicks field goals in video games? But you've got to make sure you get points. And that was as easy a three as you can get. You kick field goals in video games. That's who kicks field goals in video games. Now after the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. Here's Corey Grant now to return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Trying to get the run game going. This is Fournette. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. 
Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he's got some space here. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That was good for 35 yards on the ground and a first down. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. First down, this is Ivory. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Second down following the run. the gun. It's Bortles. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Lee. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That would a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. Inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Fournette, a first down carry. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. That's going to set him back five yards. Still second down. second down. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. And he takes it in. Touchdown Jacksonville. A great effort there. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. That's a score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. Josh Lambeau now for the point after. And that'll make it 13-7. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville.
there's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. on first down and he finds his tight end Graham and he'll get it up near the 35 right at the 34 here give him nine there on the first down completion see him that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays makes me glad I didn't make it in that league I would have had a really difficult time but now you get to sit up here with me yeah and that's fun isn't it <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them brings up a nice second down for him Lacey gets the handoff from Wilson, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. It's a loss of two, now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? Now defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Seahawks on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This time it's third and three. Again, it's Lacey. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Gun. Here's Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Richardson. A nice pick up there. Ten yards, and it'll move the sticks. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon. It's Lacey. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. On second down, here's Wilson. They find some open field here. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Throwing on first down. And his pass incomplete. 
sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now a handoff. Here's Lacey. And he'll take this one down to the 36. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Wilson. And an alley to run. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They go play action here on first down. His throw caught right around the six. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Illegal touching. Offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Offensive line wasn't set. There's the flag, and five yards back they go. Quarterback has to look around and make sure that his team is ready to go. Sometimes the quarterbacks go faster than is necessary. And that'll set him back five. On second down. And an alley to run. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Jags grab it. And nothing but daylight ahead. The 30, 20, 10. And it will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Lambeau on for the extra point. And that one puts them on top here in the third. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six.
And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. All right, let's shift our attention to Eddie Lacy. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Yeah. Yeah, in this case. On first down, Wilson. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front has eaten up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. Here's Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackle. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their heels reacting to the play. No, they saw it, came right for it, and made a nice tackle for lost yardage. Here's John Ryan now, as he's on to punt for Seattle. Before they can get the punt away, whistles as we've come to the end of the third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. now in Jacksonville and we've got a dandy here a one point game as we begin the fourth here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. This is taken around the 12. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. to Fournette now it's Bortles to throw it's a short one here complete to his tight end and he'll get this up to the 34 yard line that one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down I got the sense the defense created a little momentum for him there didn't it did their job forced the punt now nice start to the drive offense has to do their part yeah they certainly do but what a great start for them they got to thank the guys on D Oh. 
Bortles now on first down. It's caught right side of turns. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. set of downs here. Three, 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 three. They fake the handoff. Now Bortles. Lee's got it over the middle. And he's brought down. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Offense comes to the line now. First and ten. now out of the gun and past the 30 down to about the 27 eight yards on the pickup and now they'll have some options on second and short oh that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players isn't it tough hard gritty run got behind his pads bowled over a few people look at that one right up the gut so up through three quarters no reason to lighten up now just two yards to go here on second down for the offense Again, it's Fournette. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Bortles. And this is going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decided to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. And Lambo will put this one through. And that'll move their lead up to four now. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. the main field goal back out Lambo to kick this one off this is taken about seven yards deep and no thought to bring this one out he'll just go down to a knee and they'll take over at the 25 the Seattle now ready to march out of the field and a tight game after punting last time see if they can get something going on this drive as they head to the field now with the game this close You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And he's got Rome. 
boom! And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So here we go, first and 10 now. From the shotgun, Wilson. And some room to roam now. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Oh, no, he lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. He'll get just a yard on the scramble at second down. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. So they almost turn it over there. Scary moment. Second down here. From the gun, Wilson. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. It's a gain of six on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. The Seahawks on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here it's third and three. Now Wilson. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And a big hit at the end of that one. He's knocked down hard around the 37. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Don't start. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. First and 15 here behind the chains. Operating from the gun. Wilson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion, and both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. Here's Wilson. And they're going to get him. He's taken down for a sack. 
Back at the 47-yard line, Malik Jackson forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. Wilson and the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. So that one will be accepted. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and forever. Off the play fake. Here's Wilson. He's going to float this one deep right side. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Here's John Ryan now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, try to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. Play action. Now it's Bortles. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Michael Wilhoy, tough to handle on that blitz. He gets him for a loss of five. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go now. Three, 90. Oh, oh, oh. Bortles to throw on second down. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. A good job defensively to hold that to four yards, and now it's third down. I wonder what was going through his mind when he got the play call. He just got sacked on the previous play. He knows they're coming after him again. A little bit of guts to stand in there, take the hit, and successfully complete the screen pass. Really well done. The Jaguars on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. Here we go. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And incomplete here on third down. I wonder, Brandon, I just wonder, you think maybe he was worried about where he was on the field? Was he far enough? Was he close enough to the first down sticks? Absolutely. He was right there by him, and I think he was thinking first down before he caught that football. Yeah, got to catch it first, because if you don't catch it, there's no chance of picking up a first down.
Here's Brad Nordman now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. That'll be a 48-yard punt, one yard on the return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. First and ten, it's Wilson. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Eddie Lacy, the one he was trying to get it to. And that'll bring up second down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Second and 10 now, Wilson. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Third down, here's Lacey. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. But well, sometimes, Brandon, there's just not a secret to how things get done. He's been running well all game long, and they continue to rely on him in this key situation. They told us they were going to rely on him. They have. He comes through there a big third down conversion. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And nearly picked off there, and it would have been a great time for their first pick. Instead, it's second down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Again on second and ten, it's Wilson. And lock it with a grab over the middle. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Wilson now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again.
And here comes play number six on this drive. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down, Wilson. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Calais Campbell in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Back to throw. Out to the flat for Lacey. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be fourth down. They'll look to throw. And an alley to run. And he slides to avoid the hit. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. going to look to throw and he can't get a throw away he's taken down and now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense it's just their first they've got two more to use here in the final stages To throw his Bortles. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. And now the Seahawks are going to call another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Jaguars on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and 17. They'll give it up to Ivory. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
Here's Brad Nordman now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. They're down here in a one-score game. But the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. He'll look to throw. And some room to work. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. And a nice gain of 21 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. And they'll get up and spike it right at 40 seconds to go. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. He's back to throw. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the offense has it first and 10. the penalty now Lacey and he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game they give him four yards there it'll be second and six and down to just 21 seconds now as he spikes it to stop the clock seconds now what a great sequence by this defense so far they've given him nowhere to go with the football and they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown down four late gotta go for it here on fourth down gotta try it here he's back to throw he's gonna let it fly and that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen Hey, third down situation, big third down alert, lock in here, fourth down play, make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Bortles with a knee to the ground, and that should do it. And 
Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.